Well, hello, Larry. Hello, Larry. You talk to people all day for a living. Hello, Larry. But all those easy answers you are giving, are you really living your life that way? Portland is a long way from L.A. A long way. Hello, Larry. Hello, Larry. Do kids the reds alone just ain't that easy? Hello, Larry. The questions they are asking aren't that big. Cause you never know just what they're gonna say Just me, Tommy. The girls aren't home from school yet. Shaving? No, I'm just foaming at the mouth. How come you shaving in the afternoon? I got a rule. I shave whenever the whiskers come out. Okay, to keep you company? Sure. He likes to be alone when they're in the bathroom. Day after tomorrow, I'll be 13, Mr. Alder. Hey, happy birthday. Growing up, Tommy. Yeah, big one three. That's when he's supposed to shave and stay out all night and run around with girls, <laughs> drink cheap booze. Right. You know, if you work it right, you can have bags under your eyes and a bad liver before you get out of high school. <laughs> well, Mr. Alder, could... Oh, um, sit down. You're welcome. Mr. Alder, can I ask you a question? Uh, sure. Uh, just let me finish with the old Adam's apple. I don't want that sucker going up and down while I'm shaving. Well, it's, uh, it's kind of serious. Oh, yeah, so is this. Uh, would you hand me a piece of toilet paper, please? Sure. Thank you. Mr. Alder, how old do you have to be before you have your first affair with a woman? Your first affair? Yeah, am I too late? Uh, you're 13? No. Well, I think you got a couple of months yet. <laughs> uh, Tommy, uh, I mean, you never really know when these things are going to happen. Well, there's a tribe in New Guinea that starts at the age of 10. <laughs> uh, well, in some countries it's younger, in some countries it's older. Well, what about Portland? <laughs> I don't think they have affairs in Portland. <laughs> I asked my father all this stuff, but I don't know where he is. Yeah, well, uh, I'm glad you came to me. You know, if we could find my father, my mother would be collecting alimony, and I'd have enough money for a mistress. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, I can, um, I can uh, see your problem. It's kind of hard to support a mistress on a paper route. <laughs> yeah, I know you think I'm a debonair man of the world, but the truth is I'm not. Well, that's a shocker. <laughs> You see, some of the guys at school are giving me the business because I don't have a girl. Hey, you'll have plenty of girls. Well, when? I'm supposed to have a million girls by now. I'm Italian. <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, what did you do to get girls? <laughs> I used uh, corny lines. Like what? I'll take anything. I'm desperate. <laughs> All right. I'd walk up to a girl and I'd say, uh... Oh, yes, sweet cheeks. <laughs> sweet cheeks. Yeah, then I'd hit him with the clincher. I'd say, talk her up, lover boy is here. <laughs> it's not brilliant, but it saves memorizing poetry. You know, I'm glad I talked to you, Mr. Alder. Well, this is just like having a father. Yeah, any time, except when I'm shaving. <laughs> Tommy. Hi, sweet cheeks. What? <laughs> Hi, sweet cheeks. Huck her up. Lover boy is here. <laughs> Tommy Rossini, what's the matter with you? I'm a man now. I'm ready for life. We're well, not gonna have a short one. <laughs> boy, I love a woman with spirit. <laughs> Come on, Ruthie, don't you like me? 
Well, sure I like you, Tommy. But that doesn't mean you can get your crummy lips all over my face. <laughs> Look, Tommy, if you love me, worship me from a distance. <laughs> that doesn't work anymore. In two days, I'm going to be 13. Well, the only birthday present you're going to get from me is a pair of socks. <laughs> Ruthie, you want to be my girl. Tommy, you don't want me. Emily Gibbons is the one you're after. Emily Gibbons? Then you got to take a number away for her. <laughs> then go take a cold shower. <laughs> Great. You want to come with me? <laughs> Sick maniac. I love you too, honey. <laughs> Hi, Tommy. Hi, sweet cheeks. <laughs> what did you say? Kind of gets to you, huh? He said, hi, sweet cheeks. Huck her up. Lover boy is here. <laughs> you know, I've been waiting for this moment for a long time. <laughs> Close your eyes, lover boy. Now, this is working better than I thought. <laughs> Oh, this house is loaded with frigid women. <laughs> okay, you want romance? Fine, you can be my steady. Tommy, why don't you grow up? That's what I'm trying to do. <laughs> you still here, Tommy? Would you believe it? He made a pass at me. What's gotten into him? Well, I don't know. I guess when he couldn't have me, he settled for you. <laughs> no, I wouldn't have either one of you. Well, good, then get out of here. Hey, get lost, Tommy, okay? Yeah, well, who's going to pay for my broken back? Oh, oh come, come on. Hey, 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 what's all the noise? Tommy tried to come on to us, Dad. Tommy, is this true? Yeah, I guess so, Mr. Walder. Well, what did he do? He said, hiya, sweet cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> then he said, pucker up, lover boy is here. And then he kissed me. Me too. I mean, he's not only disgusting, he's corny. <laughs> Girls, I'd like to talk to Tommy for a minute, okay? Okay, Dad. And you remember, Tommy, we've got a double lock on our door. <laughs> well, I guess I blew that one. Thirteen years old, and I've already been divorced by two women. Yeah, well, I should have warned you, Tommy. There are certain girls you don't try that line on. Which ones? My daughters. <laughs> well, I gotta start someplace, Mr. Alder. I mean, all the guys in my class are making fun of me. I'm the only guy who hasn't got a girl. Well, tell him you got a girl, too. But I don't. So, stretch the truth a little. I guarantee you that's what your friends are doing. You mean guys lie about women? <laughs> Tommy, George Washington lied about women. <laughs> yeah, but they're going to ask me questions, and I'm not going to know anything. Tommy, they don't know any more than you do. Yes, they do. Well, come on, Mr. Walder, I need experience. It'll, it'll come with time. But I'm in a hurry. <laughs> Look, Mr. Walder Do you think you could get me a call, girl? A call girl? Tommy, do you know what a call girl is? Well, I know a little, but I'm willing to learn a lot more <laughs> Tommy, that's, that's not the way to handle this sort of thing Yes, it is The guy down at the candy store said that's the grown-up way to do it No, well, they're wrong I got nine dollars <laughs> Oh, wait a minute. You got nine dollars. Oh, you, well, that's big bucks. Okay, here we go. What? What are we going to do? Well, you're going to look in my phone book. Oh, they're not in the yellow pages. I look. <laughs> Tommy, what do you like? Blondes, brunettes, redheads? I, I got to know which section to look in. Um, you're not really going to do this, are you, Mr. Alder? Hey, hey, here's a blonde you're going to like. Crazy Christine. She's six foot three, wears a two-inch negligee. <laughs> Uh, listen, Tommy, uh, now, do you want her to come to your apartment, or do you want to go down to her place at the waterfront? Well, well I have a lot of homework to do tonight, Mr. Alder. Hey, that's great, that's great, because uh, Christine can help you with geography. She's got a tattoo of the world on her stomach. <laughs> no, 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 wait a minute, Mr. Alder. Oh, listen, it's no trouble, pal. Glad to do it. No, really, really. I need the $9. I'm saving up for a dog. <laughs> Oh, uh, I, I didn't know that. Yeah. Look, Tommy, I don't know any call girls. I, w I was just doing this to make you realize that this isn't really what you want. What you want is a, is a nice girl your own age. Now, isn't there someone your age that you really like? Well, yeah. Emily Gibbons. 
Okay, Emily Gibbons. So you take Emily to a movie, you go skating, and maybe if you want to, you give her a little kiss. I mean, your moment is going to come, pal. No, it won't. I'm some kind of a man I'm turning out to be. I'm too scared to call Crazy Christine. I haven't got a girl. Emily Gibbons won't even look at me, and all the guys are laughing at me. Hey, Tommy. Tommy, listen to me. Hi, Tommy. Tommy, what... Hey, Larry, what's the matter with Tommy? Oh, well, uh, we were having a little uh, man-to-man talk, and I guess it backfired. Well, what'd you say to him? He looked like he was going to cry. Well, um, Tommy is uh, going through this sex thing. He doesn't feel like he's a man right now. So we had a little locker room talk, that's all. <laughs> a little locker room talk? You make young love sound so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Lori, don't get on your high horse with me. That was a figure of speech. The kid's got a problem, so he came to me. Hey, hey, would you believe that he wanted me to get him a call girl? <laughs> You're kidding. When I scared him off, I made up a story about a crazy Christine with a tattoo of the world on her stomach. <laughs> oh, boy, what a wonderful way to tell an impressionable young boy the wonders of romance. Well, it really wasn't a tattoo of the whole world. It was actually a big dagger with a snake that goes around it that says death before dishonor. <laughs> Boy, sometimes you men treat sex like it's some kind of dirty joke. Why didn't you just take some cigars and brandy and take Tommy into the back room, swap a few X-rated limericks? Look, Morgan, I think I can handle this. I mean, for millions of years, fathers have tried to tell their sons about sex. Now, isn't it better if he learns it from me than he gets it all wrong out on the street? Hey, I agree. It's better that he gets it all wrong from you. <laughs> Florence, uh, is this picture straight? Uh huh. <laughs> you didn't look. I don't have to, Pop. I know you're one of the best picture straighteners in Portland. <laughs> Florence, just look at it. It's straight. <laughs> no, it isn't. Uh. <laughs> Florence, please. Pop, I got work to do, okay? Well, just look at it once. Is it straight? <laughs> it's crooked No, it's not Serve me right for asking <laughs> Now the picture's straight, Pop Hey, uh, Ruthie, what happened? I got sent home Why? I got in a fight I beat up three guys <laughs> Hey, are you okay? Yeah. Oh, look at your face. I'll get a washcloth. I want her to look like the loser. <laughs> Honey, what was the fight about? Well, three guys were pushing Tommy around because he doesn't have a girl. Well, I'm proud of you for standing up for your friend. Is, is Tommy okay? He kept punching and ducking and punching and ducking. He didn't want to get his face hurt in case he ever got a date. <laughs> Ruth Helen, you are just like your grandmother. She was a skinny little thing, but she could punch like a mule. I still don't hear too good out of this ear. Hello? Yes, this is Larry Alder speaking. Okay, I'll hold on. Ruthie, uh, it's your school, the principal's office. Oh, boy, I know I'm going to be in trouble. Hello? Uh, yes, yeah, speaking, Miss Putnam. Uh-huh. 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 One more uh-huh, and I know I'm going to be suspended. Uh-huh. Oh. I see. Well, if it's that important, I'll come down right now. Okay, goodbye. Give it to me straight. I can take it. Honey, it's not you, it's Tommy. What happened? He's up on a morals charge. <laughs> Francine, I want you to call Eddie Todson's parents. I'd like to see them tomorrow at 11 o'clock. Tell them I caught their son smoking a paintbrush. <laughs> Come in. Oh, Mr. Alder? Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much for coming over. Sit down. <laughs> I contacted Tommy's mother. She's out of town. And we have her permission to speak to you. Are you a relative? 
No, we live in the same building. I see. I'm friendly with his mother. <laughs> I see. It's nothing to be called into the principal's office for. <laughs> now, do you want to tell me what Tommy did? We caught Tommy in the mop closet with a girl. I'm surprised to hear that. We never would have found out if Gladys Hemmings hadn't thrown up in homeroom 408. <laughs> Our custodian, Mr. Morton, went for a mop and came out with Tommy and Emily Gibbons. Emily Gibbons? Um, well, what were they doing? They were kissing. Just kissing? Well, heaven only knows what they would have been doing if that girl in homeroom 408 hadn't had a bad sandwich. <laughs> Uh, Miss, Miss Putnam, are you telling me that you put Tommy up on a morals charge for kissing a girl in a mop closet? Our custodian, Mr. Morton, who has been with us for 37 years, said he had to pry Thomas off that girl's mouth. <laughs> Mr. Morton describes it as vacuum city. <laughs> vacuum city? <laughs> it was just a kiss. Mr. Alder, a kiss is a kiss is a kiss. Miss Putnam, a kid is a kid is a kid. How many children do you have? Two. I have 2,000. <laughs> do you realize how many runaway hormones that adds up to? <laughs> no, no, I'm afraid we're going to have to give Tommy two black stars. Any more trouble and he could get probation. Uh, Miss Putnam, aren't you overreacting a little? I mean, with all the drugs, the knives, the gangs, and all the rest of it, you mean you're going to punish a kid for stealing a little kiss? Uh, Mr. Alder, a kiss can lead to other things. What other things? <laughs> you should know. You're from Hollywood. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. What does that mean? Oh, well, I may be a school teacher, but I know what goes on in your world. I read the Inquirer. <laughs> oh, yeah? You know I read that, too? I was in it once. The nude swimming party? You couldn't see me. I was underwater, blowing bubbles. Come in. Well, Miss Putnam. Hi, Mr. Walder. I'm, uh, sorry you had to come down. No problem, Tommy. Sit down, Tommy. Now, do you want to tell us what happened? Well, um... Go ahead, Tommy. Well, will this get around the school? I mean, to all my friends? <laughs> I'm afraid it will. I took Emily Gibbons into the mop closet. <laughs> And what did you do to her, Tommy? I think I kissed her. You think you kissed her? Well, it was dark in there, Mr. Walder. It could have been the mop. Uh, did you do anything else to the mop? I didn't have time. It was a throw-up in 408. <laughs> you find this amusing, Mr. Alder? Uh, look, Miss Putnam, I am not condoning what Tommy did, but there's nothing abnormal about a boy his age trying to kiss a girl. Mr. Alder, do you know how many teenage pregnancies there are today? Okay, all right, I'll tell you what. Why don't we wait 30 days? If the mop becomes pregnant... <laughs> I guarantee you Tommy will do the right thing by it. Listen, don't let it out, it was a mop. Tommy, are you proud of what you did? Look, um, I know how serious teenage pregnancies are. But, I mean, here's a kid that kissed a girl in a mop closet just trying to prove his manhood. Mr. Alder, is that the way you prove your manhood? No, ma'am. I would never take a woman into a mop closet. <laughs> I'd take her to her place. <laughs> Wine, a little soft music. Candlelight. And we'd read the Inquirer today. <laughs> the end of our conversation, Mr. Alder. I am putting down two black stars. For me or the kid? <laughs> Ruthie, is the principal at your school really all that tough? You mean Warden Putnam? She sure is. Oh, poor Tommy. I wonder what kind of moral thing they've got against him. Just being Tommy is enough. <laughs> Maybe he's had a little too much male advice around here. Don't look at me. 
I told Lawrence we found him in a cabbage patch. <laughs> everybody. Hello, Lauren. Hi, Larry. Hi. Well, how did everything come out, Tommy? Uh, hey, let's, uh, cool it, okay, guys? Tommy's had a pretty rough day. Yeah. Gee, this sex stuff sure isn't what it's cracked up to be. <laughs> First, Ruthie throws me over the couch. Then Diane throws me over the couch. Three guys beat me up. The custodian pulls my ear off. Then I get two black stars for being in a closet 30 seconds with a mop. <laughs> now, if that's sex, then when is the afterglow setting? <laughs> Larry, I would like to talk to Tommy alone. Okay, but you better watch him. According to Miss Putnam, he is the new Italian stallion. Tommy, we're going out onto the balcony. We are? We are. Come on. Speaking of Miss Putnam, if I don't finish my term paper, you're going to have another session with her. Finish it. Finish it. Finish it. It's nice out here, isn't it, Tommy? Sit down. Oh, don't worry, I'm not going to jump. <laughs> I didn't think you were. Tell me we're friends, aren't we? Sure. You're my friend. And Ruthie's my friend. And Diane's my friend. And that's my problem. All the women I know want to be friends. And it's just not natural. I'm ready for bigger things. Well... Friendship is the first step, Tommy. You know, you just can't go up to a girl and grab her and kiss her. First, a woman has to get to know you and like you. What? <laughs> because there's a big difference between sex and love, honey. And there's a difference between lust and romance. Well, can we start with lust? <laughs> no, you don't start with lust. You start with love. Maybe sooner than you think. You know something, your girl's going to come along and you're not going to have to worry about whether or not she's going to kiss you because she's going to want to. Yeah, Mr. Alder told me all that stuff. But when is this great stuff going to start? Well, you can't go searching for it, honey, because it's going to happen when you least expect it. Man, then I got to lay in a giant supply of mints. <laughs> mints? Yeah, I want to be ready when it happens. <laughs> well, Tommy, listen, all I'm trying to say is that I don't think you have anything to worry about. You're a woman. Do you think I'm good looking? I'll go you one better than that. I think you're very handsome. You mean it? I mean it. I knew you'd go for me, sweet cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> no, just kidding. Thanks, Morgan. You know something. If you were 12 years older and about three feet taller, I might go for you myself. <laughs> you just made my day. Good. Hey, how'd it go? Well, I think we're engaged. <laughs> say, uh, listen, everybody, can I say something, please? Well, how come you're asking? Let the boy talk. Go ahead, Tommy. Well, this is kind of embarrassing, but... Hey, look, I've just been a pain in the neck to this family, and I just want to say I'm sorry. I guess I'm just a dumb kid. I want to thank everybody for being so nice about it. And I love you all very much. Well, I guess that's it. Bye. Tommy. Now, I'm, I'm not saying that I love you or anything. But you're the nicest boy I know. Mr. Alder, is that what all this big fuss is about? <laughs> I had a better time kissing the mop. 